software engineer internship season is here and people are either getting their internship offers right now or they're still in the grind to get their first internship. I can finally say that I am blessed to be done the grind after like 50 leco problems and insane amount of stress, anxiety, interviews, coding assessments, and basically thinking that I'm a failure over like 60 rejections, I can finally say that I'm done. I got my job offer for my internship for this summer and I can finally sit back and relax because it was a long road. So in this video, I'll talk about like my internship journey, like how I got to this point, as well as the two internship offers I ended up getting and which one I went for, as well as how I decided between the two. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering which internship is paying you five figures a month because it's not Amazon and it's not Google and it's not Facebook either. So which one is it? So school life during interviews was basically non-existent in terms of I really fell behind a lot of my classes. I didn't fail any exams, luckily, just because I didn't have any exams, but I probably failed a lot of homeworks. I didn't really go to class, or if I did, I would sit down in class and my professor speaking would be white noise for me because I would just have my LinkedIn open up, applying to every single software engineering internship position that I saw, even if I really didn't know what the company was about because there's a lot of companies like Datadogs and Domino Labs that I really never heard about that I just applied to hoping that, you know what, as long as I can get a summer internship, I am good. And you have to understand, I started applying to internships in November, which a lot of people will say is kind of late. Like one of my friends got an Amazon internship lined up this past summer for this upcoming summer. Like he was on it right away. And if I could go back, I would start applying way earlier than November because during November, a lot of uh, companies like Meta, for example, are already pushing into like the final rounds of interview. And if I'm just getting started, I'm already like, way behind the schedule. But back to the school life, what I would do is I would practice leco problems every single day. I would read about data structures, design patterns. Um, I would also prepare for some coding assessments, even take some coding assessments like on CodeSignal that were like good practice for um, the after coding assessments that you would be given by companies. And preparing for these coding assessments, sometimes you would have to read about data structures and understand the entire concept of it because I remember I took a coding assessment for Discover and I thought it was just gonna be like a, a easy leco problem, but no, it was a 20 multiple choice questions as well as a leco problem. And the 20 multiple choice questions whooped my butt because they're all very like conceptual heavy and I really didn't understand stacks and cues to the point of where I should have to answer those 20 questions correctly. Despite not going to classes, not uh, doing my quizzes, doing falling behind in classes, not doing my homework, and basically making my life all about internships, I still went to parties because life doesn't stop and you only live once, so. Now going to my two job offers, the first job offer, which I got after like being rejected by 70 companies or maybe even more, which still to this day is like, damn, I suck. Just kidding, don't have that mindset. You don't suck. They suck, okay? It's not you, it's them. My first offer was from Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab, Schwab, Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab's interview was unique simply because there was really no leak code question. In fact, it was a two-stage phone interview where the first stage, the, the recruiter asked me simple uh, questions like, what is agile methodology? Explain this, some general software engineering concepts. And it was more of a behavioral interview where they asked me about my past experiences as a programmer and some leadership experiences that you know, I've had where I demonstrated like taking charge and that went well. And then after that round, the second round, which was a final round was another uh, phone interview, but it was through Zoom. And basically it was the head of the internship team that you'd be working for. He basically asked questions more about like your, your experience, things you've done, projects you've worked on and um, some like some questions about design patterns, which luckily I read about design patterns like 20 minutes before the interview. So as a result, they were fresh in my head. Otherwise, I would not have been able to answer the question that you asked me, which was like, uh, choose a design pattern and explain how you would use it in a program. But after about one week, I heard back from the interview and I knew it went well. So I was pretty confident that I finally got my first internship offer. And I got the phone call right before my class where the recruiter called me. She was like, hey, you know, we're excited to bring you on. We're letting you know that we will be emailing you a internship offer. And at this point, I was so happy because I was like, finally, even if I don't get into Amazon or, or Google or Meta or Netflix, I still have a job offer. I still have an internship offer and I will not be sitting at home on my butt for the entire summer because that would suck, especially since I'm a junior in college. Internships matter heavily. The offer was this. It was $34 an hour for 10 weeks and the location was in Austin, Texas. So I would have to relocate because it is on site, not remote. And there is a 2K sign on bonus. And that 2K will basically go to rent for uh, relocating. Now, I didn't accept this offer from Charles Schwab right away because I was still in the process of other um, companies and I didn't want to like accept 
Charles Schwab and then get a better offer later down the road and be like, oh shoot, you know, now I'm stuck. But after I got accepted from Charles Schwab, my next final round interview was with Capital One and I did really well in the interview and I ended up getting a offer from them and that is my second internship offer that I'll be talking about right now. So the Capital One interview was very serious, right? It was not like the Charles Schwab interview, which was more laid back and it was more behavioral or technical. The Capital One interview had three parts, right? It was called Power Day. So it's three interviews all one day, total of like three hours worth of interviews. So there's a technical interview first, then there's a behavioral, then there's a case interview. Technical interview, which is uh, consisting of a system design question and a leak code question. The behavioral question was just an hour of me talking about my past experiences. And then a case interview was where I was given like a, a scenario that Capital One would face, you know, that the software engineers would have to work on. Now I, I had to explain like the data being involved, what I would do to, you know, solve this case, how I would improve the code that they're already given. And that's how the case interview works. But this interview, I prepped a lot for, right? I did so much lead code for this. I even bought the subscription for lead code because that way I can see the exact lead code questions I'll be getting for Capital One. And the funny part is the question I did end up getting for my Capital One interview was a lead code hard. And I had seen it on the list of questions, but I was like, what are the chances I get a lead code hard? And I got a lead code hard. So that, that sucked. And let me just say right here, thank God for lead code because he helped me for solve so many lead code questions and without him i probably would not have been able to get this uh, internship now going into the compensation for capital one the compensation is ten thousand dollars a month with a 6k sign-on bonus and the 6k sign-on bonus will go for relocation and i do get to decide between new york or virginia like which place i want to go i am leaning towards new york i don't know if officially yet but chances are i might go down to new york route if you haven't realized already yes capital one is where i'll be interning this summer and that is the industry that's paying me five figures a month which is ridiculous because i thought it would be amazon it's crazily enough amazon actually pays like 9.3k a month so capital one actually pays more capital one isn't even fang so that just kind of goes to show like just because you're not working for a fan company doesn't mean it's not in the end of the world. And not gonna lie, I did apply to Netflix. I'm still waiting to hear back, but I don't think they're gonna reply to me now. It's been two months. That is how I got my Capital One internship. Five figures a month is kind of crazy for me. I never thought as an intern, I'd even be able to get a pay like that. I didn't even know it was possible. I thought it was like as a full-time wage. So regardless, it's pretty crazy. I feel really blessed. I'm glad that the hard work and dedication I put into my internship journey has paid off. And for all those who are still in the internship grind, keep going. Trust me, as long as you apply, as long as you keep giving your interviews, as long as you keep preparing and doing lead code all the day or like two hours a day, you will probably get your internship offer that you want. The amount of work you put in is the amount of results you get out. So keep going. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below.